Hi there, another eBay find, an old Fluke 23 that was described as used, so it should be working, but its battered appearance pushed the price down. Well, it's not doing anything, but probably because it lacks a battery. Let's have a look inside. Even for just changing the battery, you have to completely open the meter, using four large self-tappers. And there we have the Fluke goodness. Quite obvious, no battery. Also the fuse for the milliamps is missing. Without it, milliamp measurements won't work. So strictly speaking, the meter is no longer fully working and meeting the used criteria of eBay. The rest seems to be in reasonable condition, but I'm worried about these two yellow devices that seem to have a crack in the middle. I've never seen those. Somehow I'm feeling mooned. But on closer inspection, the crack is actually a carefully machined slot, and it's the same on the other one. These are, in fact, spark gap capacitors, combining a capacitor with a spark gap to reliably discharge transient overvoltages. I have seen spark gaps, both in form of special PCB traces and as gas-filled devices, but these here were new to me. It pays to examine the inside of a used multimeter closely to find clues about its history. Here we have burns and residue telling the story of a very high energy event in the past. The burns are located where the 10 amp socket is, so let's have a closer look at the meter again. Using another meter set to continuity, I test the big 15 amp fuse and it tests ok. Given the burn marks, I find this very unlikely. That event must have killed the fuse, and this looks like an original fuse. Would you believe it? The fuse has been bypassed by a piece of wire. This is totally irresponsible, especially if you then sell the meter on or hand it to someone for use. Stupid stuff like this can kill people. Needless to say, the fuse itself is of course blown. Let's check the underside of the PCB. It is held with just one screw. There is a burn mark in the rear panel right under one of the 15 amp fuse terminals. But the PCB itself looks actually pretty good. Nothing obvious. The date code on the Fluke chip seems to point to 1989, making this meter around 36 years old. Time for a cleanup of the PCB using isopropyl alcohol and cotton buds. And finally, adding a battery to see if this thing even works. I also add a 500mA fuse. I don't have the prescribed 630mA type, but as the max range is 300mA, this 500mA fuse will do. Well, it comes to life. This is looking promising. For a quick AC volts test, the blue Bryman BM235 is in parallel with the Fluke. And I'm quite pleased how close the two meters are tracking using sinusoidal AC. Switching to a rectangular waveform, a meter measuring rectified average but calibrated to show RMS values for sinusoidal waves will now show 1.11 times more than a true RMS meter, and the Fluke 23 does exactly this. So it's not true RMS. Back to sinusoidal waveforms and both meters read practically identical. The meter is set to just about 2 volts sinusoidal AC and if I switch the blue meter to Hertz, you see the frequency is 50 Hertz. At 500 Hertz, the readout drops a few counts. As I increase the frequency, it drops further. At 1 kHz, it dropped 31 millivolts compared to the value at 50 Hertz, about 1.5%. On the low end, at 20 Hz, it dropped just 14 mV or 0.7%. The spec of the Fluke 23 states a frequency range of 45 Hz to 1 kHz, which it meets. But can it still handle mains voltage? Yes, it can. No problems here. DC volts is also pretty accurate. These are just random values from our bench power supply. Let's test the mV. No problems here either. Testing the current ranges is limited to the milliamps because that's the only fuse that's currently in the meter. Again, I just use my bench power supply in constant current mode to produce some test currents. 
There's no problems with the milliamp range, everything's working as it should. Ohms at 1K works just fine. 100 ohms, 10 ohms, 1 ohm. By the way, this meter does not have a rel function. 10K. A hundred K one Mac ten Mac Nothing on one hundred Macs. The spec says the maximum we can measure is thirty two Macs. Fluke typical, the meter beeps briefly when an OK forward voltage for a single diode is detected. The forward voltage of two diodes in series is displayed, but no beep. A red LED lights up and the voltage is displayed. Two red LEDs in series do not light and nothing is displayed. A yellow LED lights up and the voltage is displayed. A white LED does not light up and nothing is displayed. This meter has the fluke touch hold. To activate, you have to press the button in the range switch when powering on the meter. I test it on ohms. 100 ohm, the meter beeps to indicate it got a stable measurement and now when I remove the probes the value stays until I measure something else. 100k and now the meter shows 100k. Until I measure 1 ohm and now it shows 1.1. Touch hole is nice to have if you have to concentrate on probing and you can't keep an eye on the meter display. So the meter works but it's pretty yucky. Although ultrasonic cleaning is not working well for plastics, I decided to give it a try here. For this I'm using normal dishwashing soap and tap water. I should have heated the water in a kettle but I forgot. The ultrasonic cleaner can heat the water but it's pretty slow. I heated it to about 40 degrees Celsius and turned the ultrasonic on. After 10 minutes I turned the housing around and let it run for another 10 minutes. I don't know, the result is a bit underwhelming, but the water is definitely dirtier than before. I also ran the holster through the same cleaning using the same bath and looking at the water now, pretty yucky. In addition to ultrasonic, I worked on both the meter enclosure and the holster using isopropyl alcohol soaked tissues and yet more cotton buds. For sure it doesn't look brand new, but I think it's better than before. The holster also looks much better. I could try grinding away the scratch in the display window, but that's a lot of work and the scratch doesn't really disturb reading the values, so I decided to leave it. This meter came with original fluke leads and boy were they filthy. They are marked as 1500 volts and that's it. I guess cat ratings came later. Anyway, if you have a closer look at the red probe, the tip has melted. This all points to someone trying to measure mains voltage while having the lead in the 10 amp socket. And speaking of which, finally the ordered 15 amp fuse arrived. It's important to buy these from reputable distributors because there are lots of fakes on the market, especially eBay. As a finishing touch, I decided to do a calibration against the BM869S. Calibrating a Fluke 23 is very easy. Just apply 3 volts DC in the DC range and adjust a single trim pot so the meter reads 3 volts. That's it. I did not realize that the camera focus switched to my hand instead of the display, but you can hopefully still read it. There, that's close enough. This one step calibrates everything else, AC, currents and ohm. Just testing how close the Fluke 23 tracks the BM869S. That's pretty impressive. No problems here. So I thought it's time to put this together. Now the screws are self tappers so you want to be careful and find the original thread. To do that, insert the screw, turn it counterclockwise with hardly any downforce until you hear and feel it dropping into its original thread. Then turn it clockwise to engage. That way you avoid cutting a new thread because you can do that only a limited number of times before all the plastic is gone and you end up with a screw holding nothing. I realized that I forgot to test continuity, 
So here is that test using the original leads. Certainly not the quickest. Very often I find that continuity problems are caused by the cheap probes and I swap them with Pomona probes. Other brands are available. In this case the results are pretty much the same as before. Actually the beeper is the limiting factor here because the bar graph responded. In fact this Fluke 23 and my Fluke 77 are amongst the fastest meters in updating their bar graph. Just watch as I increase the frequency on this rectangular wave. You can see the frequency in the red meter. Just check the bar graph and disregard the voltage difference. Remember the Fluke 23 is not a true RMS meter. That update rate is pretty amazing. Actually, the manual says the bar graph is updated 25 times per second, whereas the digital readout just 2.5 times per second. The final test is the 10 amp range that had to wait for the fuse. I put about 150 milliamps in series through the blue meter and the fluke in the milliamp range. Now switch to the 10 amp socket in the fluke. Nothing. The 10 amps on the fluke is open circuit. So much for having everything fixed. First test, is the expensive new fuse already blown? Answer, no, there is continuity. The fault must be in the meter. Actually, the fault is easy to see. There is no connection from the 10 amp socket to the piece of white wire that leads the current to the fuse. The trace has burned away in the accident. I had checked the underside of the PCB but did not check the top side quite as thoroughly. Oh well, lessons learned. With a torchlight illuminating from the back, the gap is clear to see. This makes me wonder if this was the sequence of events. Someone tries measuring mains voltage in a 10 amp range. The fuse blows and the guy decides to, quote, repair his meter with a piece of wire bypassing the fuse. He or someone else keeps using the meter until the same thing happens again. This time, the circuit board tray is blue because the fuse was bypassed with wire. I soldered a bridge from the socket to the beginning of the white wire. And now there is a connection. Time to reinstall the fuse and close it all up again. Same test as before, about 150 milliamps. I now switch to the 10 amp socket. Yes, it's working. Ramping up the current to the maximum of 3 amps my bench power supply can deliver and the Fluke 23 is working fine. I end this video with a plea. Please do not patch fuses. It's very dangerous and irresponsible. And for anyone buying a used meter, it's probably a good idea to look under the fuses before using it for the first time. I will certainly do that from now on. If you like my videos, don't forget to subscribe and maybe consider becoming a Patreon. That would really help this channel. The link's in the description. Thanks for watching.